Testing is literally starting tomorrow. So it's about time I did my predictions. How are all 20 drivers gonna rank? Who's gonna win? Who's gonna be last? Constructors, that 10 as well, plus a few little special categories I'll put at the start. Grab a drink, take a seat. My name's Tomo, let's talk about it. Right, four categories to start with before we get into the meat and bones with it. First category, most improved driver in 2024. Who is gonna turn their fortunes around? Maybe it's a driver who didn't have a very good 2023 at all, become mid somewhat, or someone who had a pretty decent 2023, but is gonna absolutely smash it in 24. Well, look, there is a driver that I am backing to improve. I have kept them in their respective team in my 2025 driver predictions. He didn't have a great 2023 by any stretch, especially given another rookie Oscar Piastri really did shine. Of course, I'm going Logan Sargent. Do I think he'll beat Alex? No. Do I think he'll significantly close that gap and get a number of qualifying dubs? I'm talking like maybe between a quarter and a third of the time, I reckon Logan will work qualify Alex in 24. Again, look at his track record. Look at how he went toe to toe with Piastri, Porsche, doing all these guys in F3, right? Came through in his F2 season. I think Logan, second season at that team, he's gonna jump up significantly. Do I think he's gonna be amazing? No, I think he'll be at a decent enough level. Needs to prove a lot of people wrong based off of his performances last year. They just weren't good enough, enough of the time. But Rough Diamond, again, Yuki-esque. Yuki-esque at the start of his career. career. Yuki developed and got better. I think Logan will do the same. Category number two, closest teammates. Which teammate pairing are gonna be on performance closest? Not necessarily on points because, you know, a team at the back, a point is a much bigger deal to them than a point for a team at the front and percentages get a bit skewy flat. Who on performance is gonna be most closely matched? Now, I would argue over the last two seasons, it's been Lewis and George in one lap pace anyway, but in race pace, especially last year, Lewis really did show his class you know carlos and Charles were pretty close as well although Charles definitely had the legs on carlos in terms of one lap pace i've decided to go with mclaren i think oscar piastri is the one to watch in 24 i'm super excited i i think oscar's gonna kill it i don't necessarily think he's gonna beat lando on points but i think performance wise he's going to be right there because piastri is a serious driver. A year under his helmet, just like with Logan, Oscar had a fantastic, I mean, he got the sprint race win, didn't he? And yeah, Oscar took that opportunity that presented itself. And that shows a mindset that was super impressive. He needs to work out his race management a little bit like George does relative to Lewis. Oscar needs to do that relative to Lando, but I think he'll take a big step forward. If not Sargent for most improved, I do th actually think it probably would be Piastri. Um, but closest teammates, I'm going Lando and Oscar. I hope that Stella can control that because if we got them too far on all cylinders in a very good McLaren as well, we're in for a treat. So then category three, the opposite, the furthest teammates. Who are the two teammates with the biggest golf? A few pairings come to mind from last year, Albon Sargent. Obviously I'm not gonna do them because I think Sargent is gonna close that gap. You add Stroll Alonso, you add Verstappen Perez, Hulkenberg Magnussen. Other than that, I think the gaps were fairly close. Obviously, Yuki had about 15 different teammates, didn't they? For me, the biggest gap, I take no joy in saying this, but I think it's Verstappen Perez. I just don't see a rationale as to how Checo closes this gap. You know, for him to qualify on average, P9.09, I think something like that, on average, when they've got by far and away the best car, if everyone closes up, I just see Checo struggling even more. That gap to Max is only going to grow because I still think Max is going to kill it in 24. Of course he is, come on. He knows that car like the back of his hand is driving. Some of the most incredible driving we've ever seen in Formula 1 right now from Max Verstappen. I don't see how Checo is anywhere near him, to be honest. Even Baku Azerbaijan is like towards the end of the season. So he can't jump on an early street track that he really thrives at like Baku that early on. Then category four, driver of the year. Who do I think will excel? Who do I think will most consistently get to the ceiling of their car performance? You could be in a Haas, but getting points every weekend. 
would be incredible, right? Or you could be in a Red Bull at max and just optimizing that every weekend. I think looking at the end of last year, particularly this driver really did shine. Given the transfer market news recently, I think this driver has a lot to prove to establish themselves, to firmly establish themselves as number one at their team. They are de facto number one. But I think Charles Leclerc, I think his 2024 is going to be mad impressive. I think he's going to get multiple race wins. I think he's going to push Max many a time. So close now to the finished product. I really do. And I really hope Fred, give him the car. Give him the wheels, right? I tell you what, when Lewis comes in alongside Charles in 25, Lewis has taken on one hell of a task beating this young man because Charles Leclerc is something else. And I think 2024 is going to shine. So let's run through my 20 in order. Let's see how many I get. <laughs> I do not have a great hit rate on these, but who does? So P20, I've gone with Kevin Magnussen. And actually P19, I've gone Nico Hulkenberg. So I've gone both Haas last and second last. Now, Hulkenberg had a much stronger 2023 than Magnussen, but Magnussen was the one running the newer spec car that as far as I understand, is where Haas are probably going to be taking the direction of this car. If that is the case, then Magnussen should be able to close that gap somewhat to Hulkenberg. I think it'll be close between them two. I think it'll be much closer than in 2023. I still think Hulkenberg will just about edge out Magnussen, just because I think Hulkenberg's the better driver. I think qualifying is going to put himself higher up more often than Magnussen to then capitalise in the race when those few and far between opportunities present themselves because things around Haas don't sound great. Obviously the Steiner leaving, Komatsu coming in and I've got nothing against Komatsu at all. I think he'll come in and do a good job but you look at how disjointed that team is. American base, UK base, Italian base. Komatsu's been very, very uh, pessimistic around uh, uh, testing and just you look at the development that all the other teams around them have been making. For me it's, it's Haas stone dead last. I think Gene's going to be even more embarrassed than he was in 2023. P18, I've gone with Zhou Guan Yu, and P17, I've gone Valtteri Bottas. So another pairing, both the Saubers are still at the back. Look, I think Joe and Bottas are the weakest driver pairing on the grid. Yes, James Key's come in from McLaren. Did he leave that team in the best place? You can certainly argue not. Andreas Seidel, I, I rate Andreas Seidel. He certainly set McLaren on the path to where they are now. If you can do the same at Salva, this is going to be a very, very incorrect prediction. I just don't see enough of a step forward from this team that, I mean, what, the start of 2022, they were flying because they were at the weight limit and they just didn't develop their car aerodynamically. Everyone else got weight off their car, got down and then just pulled miles ahead of them. It's hard for me to, to look at this team with any degree of optimism given their recent years in the sport, okay? Audi still aren't there. Until Audi come in, it's just, I've got nothing to look at and be like, oh, that's a reason to be optimistic here. Problem with Joe and Bottas is that they need to hit the ground running in 2024. Otherwise, their chances of staying in this sport, 25 and onwards, are slim to none. They've got to put themselves in the shop window. I don't think either of them have been able to really showcase what they're about in these last two years. There's been these odd moments. Obviously, Valtteri's got out some really good performances at the start of 22. Is he showcasing he's a driver that can really lead a team forward, though? You look at how close that gap's been between the two of them. Rating Joe is dependent on how you rate Bottas. Look, I'm sorry, boys. It's, it's 18 and 17. What can I say? P16, I've put Logan Sargent. So he will improve. Will he jump right up to the front? Absolutely not. But I'm thinking Logan Sargent in a in a competent Williams, you know, with Vows at the helm. I think Alex doing good stuff and Logan continuing to learn from him. You've got Pat Fryer over from Alpine. The momentum feels very positive towards Williams. Do I think it'll be a massive step up in 24? No, not relative to the field. But I think Sargent P16 ahead of both Haas and both Sauber, I'm backing it. Because then in P15, I'm putting Esteban Ocon. Alpine are a team that I just, I, I would love them to do well. I, I really would. I've got a soft spot for the end stone based team. The old Renault days. Even Renault with like Ocon and Ricardo was a bit of a vibe. Like I, I, I liked that team. 
now it's very hard to, you know, with all the management changes and all that stuff, you know I rate Ocon very highly, right? And I know a lot of you think I'm, I'm, I'm biased towards Esteban. Like, I, I think Esteban's shown on many an occasion throughout his career that he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the top drivers, not consistently. He does have a mistake in him. He does race his teammates too aggressively, in my opinion. But he's been at that team, what, since 2020 he joined when it was Renault with Ricardo. He needs to look elsewhere. I said this in my, in my driver transfer predictions. Gasly's come in and at least matched him in their first year together, which the pressure was on Ocon, ultimately. He had to come, like, beat Gasly, really. Yes, Ocon had more technical unreliability, but I think Gasly, performance-wise, definitely at least matched him. Ocon had his moments in Monaco, but then Gasly got those two podiums, didn't he? P15 in a car that just, I don't see it taking the step forward it needs. And if anything, falling behind at least one other team. Shame, really. But I just don't think this is the team long-term for Esteban. Maybe Mercedes come calling. I don't think that's going to happen, but who knows? P14, I've got an Alex Albon. So I think he'll be two positions ahead of his teammate Logan Sargent. I think he'll have a another good season. I hope Williams take a step up because that'd be sick, of course, both for Alex and for Logan to really showcase. If Williams are in a place when they can only get Alex P14, there's no way he's staying at that team because that's not enough of a jump up for him to have faith in the project, giving him a potential title fighting car within the next couple of years, surely. They need to show more than a P14 finish for him. P13, Pierre Gasly. So two ahead of Ocon. Again, I just don't have faith in Alpine, which is a shame. But I do think Gasly will be in that more for the long term than Ocon. I think he is a more valuable commodity to Alpine, certainly the more marketable driver. And he's shown in his first year alongside Ocon that he can match Ocon, if not beat him. I mean, he outscored him. So. I think Gasly long term, my driver prediction was Gasly doing, and I still think that could happen. But yeah, Gasly P13, slight regression for Alpine, I'm afraid. P12, Lance Stroll. Lance Stroll in his Aston Martin. I just, I really hope he's learned from last year, because last year was a weird one for Lance, wasn't it? It's like, it started quite well. It's not the first time he's had a like, strong start to the season. Typically, I, I feel like, I could be wrong, his first halves of seasons tend to be better. Like, his first half of last year was pretty good. You know, Saudi was going well until the car blew up. You know, Bahrain went really well. Like, Mugello 2020, when he crashed, his season to that point was going really well. And then it, it kind of shunted and I don't know, whether it's a mentality thing and he wasn't able to, because he, he, he's shown, he's shown he can pedal, he, he can do it. It's so inconsistent, so inconsistent. And you look at his qualifying record relative to Fernando. I, I don't begrudge him, blame him for getting frustrated by the situation. Yeah, but when it blows up and he's like pushing his trainer in the pit lane, like it's, it's, not, it's not a good look and it's like indicative of an underlying frustration in Lance and look you'll always be able to level the critique at him that he's not going to have that same dog in him that a lot of these other drivers do because he has a guaranteed seat but also he's racing against Fernando Alonso who's one of the greatest to ever do it so I, I think Stroll's going to have again I, I've got no reason to, to be like oh Stroll's going to really take a big step forward this year like I've been saying that for so long now does he have the mindset for Formula One to actually achieve pinnacle success I don't believe he does P11 Yuki Tsunoda Yes, Yuki is going to finish P11, which, you know, like, that's what he does. He's always on the cusp, isn't he? Look, I think Yuki is a very capable F1 driver, but I don't think he'll beat Ricardo. In fact, I think Ricardo will finish P10. So one position ahead of Yuki. If he can get back to his peak levels, if he can find that confidence in that car, he'll beat Yuki Tsunoda. No, no, like Daniel Ricciardo, it's easy to forget just how good Ricciardo was back in 17, 18, even 14 when he beat Vettel, you know? That's always going to be a question mark. I do think he'll beat Yuki Tsunoda. I do think he'll be motivated because of the potential for a Red Bull seat. I don't think Yuki will have a bad season. If you're looking at Ricciardo with the anticipation that he's going to be like close to his prime, for Yuki to get you know, one position off of him is 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 crazy. If you think Ricardo's washed and then Yuki's still behind him, then you would also think Yuki's washed, I guess. Like I think Ricardo will have it in him to, to bring the levels. P9, Fernando Alonso. Quite low, isn't it? Ultimately, look, Aston Martin won't have the barnstorming start to the year that they did in 2023. You gotta look at a McLaren. 
you got to look at a Ferrari, you got to look at potentially a Mercedes as well, being more competitive relative to Aston Martin at the start of 24 than any of them were relative to Aston Martin at the start of 23. Fernando's another driver that, you know, he's, he's pretty much said this, you know, he's going to look at these first kind of four, five, six races, see where the Aston Martin performance is, and if it's not good enough, then I'm sure he'll be entertaining that Mercedes seat. I guess it depends on where Mercedes are as well, relative. You would think long-term Mercedes would be in a better place, but just because they're an engine provider does not guarantee success. Alonso's an unreal peddler. I just don't quite have faith. I've been hurt by Aston Martin's downturning trajectory. They did kind of sort it out towards the end of the year. What I will say is I think the Aston, Mercedes, Ferrari, McLaren battle I'm not putting Red Bull into that, is going to be chaos. Like, it's going to be super close. I think that car won't quite have the, the level to, to give him anything higher than P9. P8, I've gone Lewis Hamilton. And P7, I've gone George Russell. I'm putting Mercedes firmly down there. P8, P7. Mercedes have to prioritise somewhat George Russell at least by the, like the second half of the season. Because Lewis is leaving to Ferrari. Mercedes can't be naive to that fact, okay? They have to focus on what's going to better them in the long term. Lewis has been there a long time, but he's leaving. Like He's given a whole year of <laughs> like notice. These two will be close. I think, you know, qualifying pace, I've got no reason to believe it will, it will change. And if anything, if that Mercedes can be a more stable package, then Lewis should be able to get more out of it. But I think the team will favour George. Not so much in terms of like team calls, like on the radio being like, let George through. Just in terms of on the back end. But also with another year under his helmet, I think George, his race pace, his decision making should only get better with time. And I do think 24 will be his best season to date in a Mercedes. And with the W15, do I trust Mercedes to have jumped McLaren and Ferrari from the start of the season as well? I just feel like them two will make up too much relative to Mercedes. I think they'll give their drivers a better package than George and Lewis. And if Red Bull dare stick zero pods on their car in Suzuka, I am going to lose it. P6, Sergio Perez. Checo P6, he was P2 last year, I'm putting him P6. Look, I think it's going to be a lot more competitive behind Max. Unless he takes a big step forward, if he drives like he was last year, he will get found out even more. I still think he'll be ahead of both Mercedes, um, because I think he will have his moments on certain tracks where he will get, you know, pretty comfortable P2s. I can't look at that situation and be like, oh, it's going to get a lot better in 24. He's had three full seasons of that team, and each year has got progressively worse relative to Max. Whatever he's doing isn't working. Red Bull have become very reliant on Verstappen and with a talent shining so bright who loves such a peaky car, such a car, like on the nose so much, like so many drivers have talked about this, how he's just got this inhumane ability to control a car that's like that on the nose. You have to develop in that direction. You develop a car that you know he can get the best out of because he is your best chance of not just winning a driver's title, but a constructor's because he pretty much done it on his own last year anyway. But in F1, you run two cars. So that doesn't mean that whoever's in that other car is going to be in for a lot of stick, unfortunately. And unless Checo's performances improve significantly and he does something different, I don't know what, something different, then it's going to be the same again. P5, I've gone Carlos Sainz. Now, obviously, just like Lewis, Carlos knows he's leaving. He's got one more year at Ferrari, and I'm sure he'll, well, he'll be motivated because he wants to put himself in the shop window. But if the Sauber move happens, which looks like the more likely move now, that's pretty much guaranteed anyway, isn't it? If he wants it. Maybe if he wants a different seat, a Mercedes, maybe an Aston Martin seat, if an Alonso goes to Mercedes, then maybe his performances are a bit more, you know, imperative. But you know, the same issues that Lewis is going to come across, especially in the second half of the year, I think Carlos is going to come across at Ferrari. Also, Charles was really second half of last year, especially after that Japan update. Leclerc was quite comfortably ahead of Carlos, which is cause for concern because obviously the end of last year is the closest comparison we've got to the start of this year. Leclerc's got this long-term deal in the same way that, you know, Red Bull know they've got Max for the long term, so it makes sense for them to focus their development direction and their setup 
knowledge, know-how around a style that best suits Max Verstappen. Ferrari should do the same for Charles Leclerc because he is that guy. Of course he is. So I do think this will be more of a struggle uh, in 24 for Sainz than it was for him in 23. Okay, P4, top four time, Oscar Piastri. P4 for me. The Aussie is going to do bits. He's not going to outscore Lando, but I think performance-wise, he's going to be very, very close. If anything, them two tripping over each other because, spoiler alert, Lando P3. I think the McLaren boys are going to be 3-4. Maybe there's going to be a little bit of just, not because of their characters, right? Because I think the characters and they get along really well. But when you've got two hyper-competitive teammates in the same team, that's just what happens. It's nothing personal, it's just what happens. And it always will happen. Because the first thing you got to do is to beat your teammate, right? So if your teammate's really close to you, then you're going to be like, come on, you're going to be going for every little bit of you know, potential advantage you can gain. I do think Lando will get his first win in 24. I could see Oscar getting a win as well in 24, definitely. So close to the full package now is Lando. I think in the races, he's really good. Like, he's really good at races. Decision making is pretty good now. I know a lot of people give him stick for not fighting enough with Max, but like, we'd like that, of course, from an entertainment point of view. But the thing is, these margins are so fine. Like, Lando just needs to prioritise what's best for points at the end of the day. And he knows he's... I mean, we saw him go close in Brazil. Like, give him a break, man. I, I, think, that, I think that's pretty harsh, personally. But I, I think Oscar's going to be right up there with him, flying the papaya flag. But what I will say as well, I think it's all going to be pretty close. I don't think science is going to be a mile off them too, not by any stretch. Because then in P2, is Max... Ah, no, it's Charles Leclerc. Sorry, it's, it's Charles Leclerc. It's Charles Leclerc P2. I think he's going to be fantastic. I think he's going to be so good in 24. I think Max is going to win it. Max is P1. But I think it's going to be... Let's say very close. He's going to be much closer. I think... Here's one. I think Charles Leclerc will be within... 100 points of Max Verstappen, which is not, it's not close, but it's a lot closer. Well, Max was almost 300 clear of Checo last year. I think that, that's, that's my prediction. Leclerc within 100 points of Verstappen, but Verstappen still wins it because he's the best driver in F1 right now. He's got the best car, whatever Adrian's cooking in that Red Bull. Like, them side pods are looking pretty mad. About zero pods in Suzuka. I don't, I don't know about that. A special shout out for, for Charles Leclerc. I've already waxed lyrical on it, but I think he's, He's gonna, he's got that dog in him. I think he's gonna smash it in 24. But I think Verstappen's gonna win the whole thing. Shock. So then finally, constructors. A lot of these will make sense because, I mean, Haas are obviously last because their drivers are literally last and second last. Same for Sauber, P9, and their drivers, I 18th and 17th. Then Williams, I've put P8. So you've got Logan finishing P16, Albon finishing P14, Alpine P7, drop in to P7 with, with uh, Ocon P15, Gasly P13. Then you've got Racing Bulls with Yuki and Ricardo at the wheel. Uh, P11, P10, makes sense. Aston Martin will outscore them, even though Lance finishes behind both the racing balls because of Fernando picking up big points. Fernando will be much closer to Hamilton than Ricardo will be closer to Fernando. You know what I mean? The points Fernando will inevitably score will make up for Lance's shortcomings. P4, obviously Mercedes. Uh, P8, P7, no shock there. P3, even though I've put both Norris and Piastri ahead of science, I'm actually putting McLaren P3. I think Leclerc will do enough to have a bit of a buffer to Norris, and I think Science will still be close to Piastri and Norris. I don't think Science is going to fall off completely, don't get me wrong. I think Ferrari P2, and I think Max, yes, that gap to Leclerc will be within 100 points, but I think Perez will do enough to support just, but I think the Constructors title will be way closer than it was, like way, way, way closer. I think Red Bull will win it by less than 50 points. And that's a wrap. We'll have to look back on this in uh, 11 months time or so and see how many I got wrong. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of me. Because my name's Tomo. Thanks again. Have a good one. Ta-da.